Folks, our Amsoil Fishing Report is now going to head up to Longville, Minnesota, which is near Walker. And for the last 20 years, I have had the privilege of fishing with a good friend, Rusty Lilliquist, who owns Rusty's Up North Realty. But for his entire life, Rusty has fished and guided that area up there in northern Minnesota. And I guess if I was reincarnated, folks, that's where I would want to live, in Longville with Rusty. Hey, Rusty, good to see you, buddy. How's the weather up there in Longville, Minnesota? You know, for January, John, we can't complain. It's like 23 degrees right now. All right, let's look at the second half of January and the first half of February. You've been sending me some pictures of some beautiful big bluegills. Has that been pretty good? I'll tell you, the bluegill bite's been wonderful, John. All the lakes up here are producing nice bluegills, and a lot of us local people here have a, a conservation practice that we we all individually do. Any any bluegill over nine inches goes back, and any crappie over 13 inches goes back. And I'll tell you, just in a few short years with just a few of us locals doing it, the, the size structures really come up. That's exciting. Now let's talk a little bit about specific bodies of water. Uh, let, let's talk about that woman chain. Uh, is that a good body of water for panfish? I'll tell you, throughout all the lakes, the Lone Lake chain, they all hold very, very good panfish. And of course, you know, we did a show a few years ago out on Woman, and you saw those 14 and 15 inch crappies we were catching and, and those big bluegills. So, I mean, it, it's, it's really good up here, John. Generally speaking, what type of water do you target in, in second half of January, February for the bluegills and the crappies? Well, the bluegills, they move tight up into the weed beds. Any weed beds that you can find that still have a few green weeds in them, that's where you're going to find the concentrations of the bigger bluegills. Now, the crappies will tend to, to move away from those weed lines, and they'll go into the deeper basins. And they suspend usually three to seven feet off the bottom in some of those holes. So if you're using your hummingbird, you can see the difference between... You, you drop that hummingbird down there, and you see them flashes, you know right where to put your jig. That's nice. Now, let's talk about Leech Lake. You know, uh, over the years, I, I've had some really good perch fishing experiences with you over the years. Has, has the perch fishing on Leech been any good? You know, it's it, it's been real spotty. Some guys are really doing well, and a lot of guys aren't catching them. But, you know, the perch are kind of, they don't seem to be schooled up like they used to be when you and I fished it. There's a few here and a few there, and you got to kind of work around and keep looking for them. But I'll tell you, the walleye bite right now is tremendous, especially in Walker Bay. That last, you know, hour, 45 minutes before dark, they're really slamming the walleyes. That's been a magic spot for years, Walker Bay. Now, that's the deeper part of Leech Lake. And uh, how, do, how do folks figure out where to go? Can they just go where there is other guys fishing or? Well, a lot of people, they just, you know, they just look where the houses are and go fish by them. And that's, that's a good plan if you haven't fished the lake. But, you know, anymore with all the, the GPS and the mapping systems we have, Hummingbird's got a great mapping system. You can look on that map and you can find the humps out in Walker Bay. And, and like I said, Walker Bay is a much deeper basin than the rest of the lake. It's almost like two separate lakes. The eastern basin is, is a lot bigger, but it's, it's a shallow basin where Walker Bay is, you know, over 100 feet of water. And then, then the fish there more relate to the humps and the, the deep, hard-cutting edges. And, you know, some of the pen peninsulas have points and stuff, you know, Waukee and Sandy points out on them that the walleyes move up on right at dark. A couple of more questions on leech before we talk about something else. People are asking me about eel pout. Uh, is there any way to target? You've got that big eel pout festival on Leech Lake every year. Is there any way to target eel pout on leech? Well, you know, at this time of year, they're basically in the deep water basins. And those guys fishing walleyes in Walker Bay at dark are catching uh, eel pout right now. And uh, I've got a friend of mine that specifically targets eel pout, and that's all he does. But he usually goes after them a little later in the winter. And then he, he looks for them spawning up on the rock reefs and stuff. And that's usually an after dark bite. It is after dark, yes. Okay, let's move up to Winnie. Uh, maybe talk about Winnie, Cass Lake, uh, Bemidji, anything uh, new on those lakes? You know, right now there's a heck of a walleye bite on Winnie right off of the high banks. And if you go to the eastern side, they're still picking up a lot of perch like we just caught a couple weeks ago. Um, they're having to sort through them, you know, do a, do a little sorting to get those bigger ones. But the perch bite's still on. And the walleye bite on the eastern shore there by high banks is real hot right now. Got to ask you this. Everybody's telling me about the red hot fishing on Mille Lacs. Uh, of course, you can't keep any of the, those walleyes or maybe just one. But it has been phenomenal walleye fishing on Mille Lacs. I'll tell you, John, I haven't had the chance to get down there and enjoy it yet. But the guys I'm talking to, 
are catching walleyes like they used to catch, you know, back in the 90s. It's some of the best walleye fishing they've ever had in their life. And, of course, you know, it's just a one fish limit down there. So it, it isn't attracting the big crowds, and maybe that's some of the reason why the bite is so great, too. But but there's a lot of fish going there. And that's the deal on Mille Lacs, where if you just want to catch fish for fun and throw them back, I'm hearing reports of 30 to 40 walleyes a day per guy. Oh, 30 to 40 walleyes per day, and then you're probably going to mix in a couple of fish over 28 inches. And I, I've got a, a guy that I used to guide that still comes up from Iowa. He, he goes to Mille Lacs. He said, I don't care if I don't bring any home to eat. I can go up there and know if I spend the weekend, I'm going to get at least one over 28 inches. And he goes, catching, you know, trophy walleyes like that, how can you complain? Right. One last question, Red Lake. How's that been? You know, Red Lake is on the downslope right now. Um, the bite kind of turned off up there. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's going to turn back around as soon as we get a weather change up there. But uh, this last weekend, the bite was real flat. I mean, very few fish caught, unfortunately. But uh, that will change. And the, the upside is they are starting to get a few crappies again up there. Okay, now that Red Lake, we're not talking trophy walleyes here. We're talking number of good eaters. That, you know, there are some big walleyes in there, but generally the fish you catch are between like 14 and 18 inches up there. All right, buddy. Well, hey, thank you. Uh, I like your musky mount and your deer mount behind you. What is that behind you there on, over your right shoulder? Is oh, that's a, that's an antelope I shot out in Wyoming a number of years ago. And the muskie is my uh, largest muskie ever. It's a, it's a reproduction. It was 53 by 53 and a half by 26. And uh, I let that go on leech a number of years ago. and had a repo done. You're a wonderful conservationist. Thanks, John. I'll see you soon, buddy. Okay.